All right, guys, so today we're going to be talking about division. And the problem in particular we're going to be looking at today is 735 divided by 7. Now, when we're talking about division, we're talking about splitting something up into pieces. So we're talking about taking this number, 735, and we're talking about splitting it up into seven different groups. So one way you can kind of think about this is you can kind of think about seven groups. Five, six, seven. And we're basically going to take this 735 and we're going to give a little bit of it to each of those seven groups. So we're splitting it up. And each of these groups will be equal to one another. They're all going to end up as the same size. So the way we do that is um, I'm going to divide like this. I'm going to use this symbol. 735 divided by 7 is the way that we would read that. Now, we're always going to put the number that we're dividing up inside of this symbol. Now, you'll notice uh, I have three separate place values here. I have, here's the hundreds place, here's the tens place, and here's the ones place. Now, I don't want you to forget about those groups. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven groups. Remember, we're going to be splitting up this 735 into those seven groups. Now, the first thing that I notice when I see 735 divided by 7 is I see my hundreds place here. So notice we have seven hundreds. Remember, that's in the hundreds place. And we are going to divide, divide those seven hundreds into seven different groups. So the first question is, do I have enough hundreds to put one into each group? Um, so if I were to, for instance, put 100, 100, and so on, all the way to 7, do I have enough hundreds to do that? Well, because I have 7 hundreds, and I'm splitting them up into 7 groups, yes, I do have enough hundreds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say 100 in each group. And if I put 100 in 7 different groups... Um, 100 times 7 is going to be 700. Um, so I'm going to subtract away 700, which will leave me with no hundreds left. Now, I still, though, have other things to split into groups, which would be 35. So I'm going to bring down my 3. And remember, this represents three tens. So now we're working in the tens place. And we're going to ask ourselves, and I'm going to draw 7 new groups. Remember, these groups already have 100. Um, so at this point, I'm asking myself, can I put a 10 in each group? Well, I have three 10s, and I have, remember, seven groups. Um, if I were to put a 10 in each group, uh, if I were to put a 10 all the way across, that would be 70. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, if I put a 10 in each group, which means I do not have enough to put a 10 in each group. I'm going to say that zero tens would fit in each group. Okay, but I do have some ones. So now we're in the ones place. We have 35 total ones to split up, and we have seven groups to split them up into. Now, one thing that I always recommend for students to do is I always recommend students to write down their multiples of the number that we're dividing by. So, for example, in this case, that's seven. So I'm going to write a multiple of seven. And another way to say multiples is counting by that number. So seven, 14, 21, 28. And notice we hit that 35. It's going to be my multiple. So this is going to be, um, uh, this is going to be one multiple, two multiples, three multiples, four multiples, and five multiples. So now notice if I'm splitting up 35 into seven different groups, I can put five into each group. Five, 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 five into each group. And if I do that, seven times five is 35, and I will end up with nothing remaining. Now, we always hope we can get it to divide up evenly, but sometimes if it doesn't divide up evenly, we just end up with a remainder. That just means we have something left over and we don't have enough to give some to every single group. So as you can see down here at the bottom, we have a total of 105 that went into each group, which is here. Now, to check division, we can always work backwards and use the opposite or the inverse operation, which is multiplication. 
So one way I could do that is I could take 105 and I could multiply by 7. 7 times 5 is 35. 7 times 0 is 0 plus 3 is 3. And 7 times 1 is 7. And we end up with 735, which was the same number that we started with here. Now, a couple things just as a reminder. I always tell kids, write down your multiples of the number that we are dividing by. If you need to see this visual here to help you remember that we're splitting things up, do so. And then lastly, notice that I put these place value markers to represent the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. If you feel like those are helpful for you, go through and put those in as well. Um, so hopefully this helps you out with division a little bit and we will get, be getting a lot more practice this week.